Hello, how are you doing? I hope you're okay. My name is Aaron Lockman, which you already know probably, and I am in my kitchen because everything is terrible. The world is a cold, useless, chaotic, terrible place. Uh, so I figured that I would teach you to make good bagels because you know, we just need we just need some goddamn light in these trying times. Now, of course, many of you have perfected your bread recipes, your ciabattas, your sourdoughs, uh, but the bagel is a very specific uh, kind of thing. And, and not a lot of people realize consciously what a good bagel tastes like. They know it subconsciously. They can tell the difference when you, you bite into a supermarket bagel and you bite into a real good bagel from like a Jewish deli. They can tell the difference. But, the, but, 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 but they can, couldn't tell you the criteria. So I'm gonna tell you the criteria. A good Jewish bagel, it is crispy on the outside, and furthermore, it is bubbly on the outside. It has little bubbles in the crust on the outside that make it nice and crispy, crunchy on the outside. And then, then, in addition to that, it has to be soft and chewy on the inside. That's very important. You gotta have that contrast between the crunchy and the chew. And I will teach you how to get that maximum contrast. Now, this is mostly based off a recipe that I found online uh, that I will link below in the description. However, I have added a few tweaks, and some of those tweaks come from another recipe. And there will be some ingredients that you might not be able to find in the regular old grocery store, but which thankfully are pretty easy to order online. So the first thing you want to do is just take a deep breath. And just let go of all your tension. Just, just watch it float away down the stream. And then, you make bagels. First thing is you wanna steal your roommate's KitchenAid. Now you don't have to use a stand mixer, but it makes things a heck of a lot easier. You will need the big bowl of the stand mixer or just a regular big bowl. And you will also need a smaller bowl. In like this. Where's my yeast? Where is my yeast? Who took my yeast? Now, the first thing you will need is one teaspoon of yeast. Now, according to my calculations, this should be about one teaspoon because I've generally found that one of these packets of uh, instant yeast contains about two teaspoons of yeast. Uh, and so I used half of one of these packets uh, last time I made bagels, and this is the other half. Very important is that these packets uh, are, they're, they're fine, not refrigerated, before you open them, but if you open the packet and only use half of the yeast inside, then you have to store the rest in the refrigerator where I just got this. Otherwise, the yeast will be ruined. Okay, now again, I'm like 99% sure that this is one teaspoon of yeast, but I'm just gonna measure it out to make sure. Yeah, what do you know? Uh, I measured out one teaspoon of yeast and there was still a little left, so there you go. Anyway, yeah, it turns out yeast is a living organism, and if you don't store it in the fridge after you uh, undo the packet, then uh, uh, bad things, it dies. So I'm gonna put the rest of this back in the fridge. All right, now the next thing you need is maple syrup. This recipe uses maple syrup instead of sugar, and I think that it gives it a very nice quality. You can't taste the maple syrup like in the finished bagel, uh, but I just, I don't know, I just like maple syrup. So what you do is, you get a microwave safe mug or small bowl, and into the bowl go three tablespoons of maple syrup. If you don't break the bottle. Oh God, what did I do? Oh, I gotta break, I gotta break the airtight seal. Hang on. I wonder if anybody's ever made the joke of the airtight seal and then you're like, you, you cut to a seal who specializes in pressure containers. And is like, oh, 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 I don't know. Is that the sound a seal makes? Oh, 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 I'm here to check the pressure on your canisters. Thanks, airtight seal. We've been waiting for you this whole time. You're, you're, you were foretold to us in the prophecy. All right, <clears throat> so what you do is you take three tablespoons of maple syrup, you put it in the microwave safe mug slash bowl, 
And why does the mug have to be microwave safe? Because you're gonna microwave it. Think it through. I like to microwave mine for about 30 seconds so that it is warm. Uh, if it's been in the refrigerator and the maple syrup is cold, then you might need to microwave it a little longer. You don't want the maple syrup to be scalding hot. You need it to be warm. Uh, because it needs to do a nice, beautiful little chemical reaction with the yeast. I don't know what that chemical reaction is, but I assume it's cool. Chemists, tell me in the comments. And what you do is you stick your finger in it, and if it's, ooh, mm, if it's too hot, then you let it cool down for a little bit. All right, so once your maple syrup is cooled down enough so that it is warm, but not hot, what you do is you take just one tablespoon of the three tablespoons, and you put it in the bowl with the yeast, and then you go to the sink, you get a tablespoon of water, lukewarm water, and you put that lukewarm water in the bowl as well, you mix it up with the tablespoon, get that nice kind of gross looking slurry there, look at that, look at that slurry. And then you let this mixture sit for 10 minutes. But you're not gonna be just sitting during those 10 minutes. No, you are gonna be busy making your dry ingredients. Now, one thing this recipe does is that it apportions uh, the dry ingredients by uh, weight and not volume. So we're not gonna use cups exactly. Uh, we are gonna use grams. So the recipe calls for 750 grams of good old fashioned bread flour. If I can get the goddamn package open. Measuring in grams I think is better because uh, flour is a powder and so sometimes it can condense if you let it sit. And so if you measure it by weight, you know you're getting the right amount of, of particulate flour in it. We're still gonna use a cup measure because that's the quickest way to get the flour on here. And we're gonna just apportion the flour in there. Is that a word, a portion? Probably. What I usually do is I do one uh, load of 350. Oh, we're almost there, we're at 340. One load of 350 and the next load will be 300. That way we get 750. The reason we don't do it all at once is because this little bowl that I'm measuring with is not big enough. So there you go. 345, 46, ah! 350, look at that, beautiful. Dump that into your bowl. And now we just need the 300. No, I was wrong. My math was wrong. I need 400 this time. I don't know why I said that. I said that because I was bad at math. 400, look at that. So 350 plus 400 equals 750 total grams of bread flour. Oh, okay, now we need one tablespoon of vital wheat gluten. Now this is kind of hard to find in the grocery store, but you can order some from King Arthur Flour online. It comes to your door, it's pretty easy. Uh, we like King Arthur Flour because they're owned by their employees. That's nice, they're, they're not sponsoring me, they ju I just like them. <laughs> Seize the means of production! So you just need one tablespoon of that, but uh, we're gonna wipe this off because it still has yeast slurry on it. <laughs> Just one tablespoon of the vital wheat gluten. And then you just need two teaspoons of salt. I like to use uh, kosher salt because we are making Jewish bagels after all. Uh, we got uh, one and a two. And then we're gonna use a rubber scraper and mix those dry ingredients so they are evenly distributed, all nice and pleasant like that. And what you do is you have to make up Hang on, you can't see this well. You have to make a well in the center. You gotta dig a little hole and make sure that it's sturdy enough that flour like isn't falling down into the hole. There you go, you got the hole, there's the hole. All right, your yeast and maple syrup and water slurry has now been sitting for 10 minutes and you can see it's kind of bubbly, it's kind of frothy. Uh, and that's good, that's what we want. So now what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna add the rest of the microwaved maple syrup that we didn't use before. We're gonna add that in there. Beautiful. We're gonna mix that up. Do, 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 do. Look at that, it's kinda nice. It's kinda got that swirly sort of look. There we are. And then this is the reason why we have the well in the center of the dry here. We're going to pour this uh, maple syrup yeast mixture into the well, like so. So you can see there's a little 
There's a little, there's a little, it's, a, it's like a little volcano there. Now the next thing you need is 385 milliliters of lukewarm water. And again, it has to be lukewarm, not cold or hot. Uh, and that's for yeast reasons. And you're also going to pour that into the well on top of the maple syrup mixture. Uh, but as you can see, once you've poured it into the well, it's uh, it's kind of overflows the well. It's the well's kind of gone now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this together with the rubber scraper. The recipe says to do this with your hands, but I, why? You're just gonna get your hands dirty and gross. So we're just gonna mix this very nice, very casually until it forms something resembling a dough. So after a few seconds, this is approximately how it should look. Uh, it kind of looks like a dough. It's still very dry and crumbly, uh, and that's not what you want. So in order to fix this, we have to knead it with a K. We also need to knead it, and we also knead it with an N because I, I don't know about you, but I need bagels. But, but the first thing we have to do before we can get to any of that is to knead it with a K. Now, the recipe that I found, they would have you do this by kneading it yourself, like on a board with your hands for 15 minutes. And we're not gonna do that because we don't hate ourselves. But that is why we have our roommate's KitchenAid. That's why we're gonna use it. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna unwind the cord for your stand mixer and plug it into the wall. You wanna lift it up here, and you want to attach the dough hook. Dough, a deer, a female deer. No, not that kind of dough, it's the D-O-G-D-O-U-G-H, uh, not the D-O-E. Department of Education, get the fuck out of here. They never taught me how to make bagels in school. They don't teach you the useful stuff. I don't know how I got here. This is just what being around me is like, is that like a good 50% of the stuff that comes out of my mouth is pure nonsense. So what you wanna do is you take your dough that's still dry and crumbly, and you uh, put it in the bottom of your stand mixer here. And then what you do is you lower the dough hook, lock it, and then put it on very slow, the slowest setting. And you do this for 15 to 20 minutes until the dough is uniform and smooth like a bowl. And of course, you can do this by hand. You can knead the dough by hand if you don't have a stand mixer. Uh, but you know, I have the stand mixer, so I might as well make things easy for myself. It has been 15 minutes. Let us switch that off and uh, let's see what we got. That's pretty smooth. I would call that pretty smooth and ball-like. Certainly uh, it all sticks together. Well, except this little bit up here, but that's okay. We forgive it. Come on, get out of there. Beautiful. So really now what you need to do is uh, just uh, wait. <sighs> So you remove the bowl from the uh, KitchenAid. You place the bowl with the ball of dough over in uh, you know, a place where you can just leave it alone. It can be your table, it can be wherever. You cover it with your nicest towel. You secure the towel with your finest rubber band. Oh, can I do this? Yes, amazing. And then you let that sit for two to three hours or until that ball of dough has doubled in size. So I will see you, lovely people, in two to three hours. And we're back. I know how to do things. Hello, we're back. It has been three hours, four hours, I don't know. Time has no meaning. But let's take a look. Also, you'll notice I'm wearing this lovely shawl, and I love this shawl because when I wear it, I feel like a like a housewife from a Steven Spielberg movie, you know, or, or some, some, you know, one of those sort of Stephen King-esque mysteries, like, you know, oh, but, but 
Officer, officer, no, it's, it's not possible. You, you can't have seen my husband. He died. He died 30 years ago. You just, and just sort of keep wrapping the shawl around yourself ad infinitum. Anyway, I like this shawl. It got cold. <sighs> anyway, let's check out our dough. Has it risen? Oh, look at that. Yeah, it has risen. Look at that. You can call that Christ, because that has risen. So now what we do is we take it over to the counter. Now what this dough is going to give you, is going to give you nine equal sized pieces of dough that are each 135 grams, approximately. That's for nine goodly sized bagels. These bagels are going to be extremely normal bagel sized. Sometimes you'll get bagel recipes that'll give you bagels that are super big or super small. No, these are normal sized bagels. I just want to stress that. Binging with Babish, looking at you. All right, so we're gonna steal your roommate's uh, kitchen scale again. And when each chunk is separated from the batter, you're gonna put it on a nice little, uh, uh, I've completely forgotten the word for this metal thing that you put baking items on. Baking tray. Baking, tr baking. It's a, th put them on the metal thing. My brain is just, it, it's, it's, uh, it's operating at like 30% normal functioning and it has been since the beginning of quarantine. You're gonna line this, whatever the hell it is, with parchment paper. I remember the word for parchment paper. Boom! And you also wanna spray the metal thing with spraying oil of your choice. The one I have is canola oil. Press your wax paper down on the oil so the oil holds it in place. And you spray the top of it too. Beautiful. All right, now to the weighing of the dough. It's pretty simple. You just sort of take a clump of dough, cut it so it's the right size. Turn on the scale first. Make sure the dough is, that's too much. That's 163 grams. Gonna cut some off. 144, still a little too much. Cut a little less off. 138, that's close enough. That's what we're doing. That's, you know, we're not perfectionists here. We're just, we're just having a good time. We're just vibing, getting it as close to 135 as possible. Now, here's the fancy part. Uh, before you put it on the tray, you gotta make it into a nice, even bowl. So what you do, and you, you might want to get some water on your hands for this. In fact, I think I want some. Hang on. It's pretty simple, but a little counterintuitive. In, you don't want to roll it into a ball like you do with Play-Doh, because that won't, uh, that won't take care of, like, the, the, the lines and, and abrasions. Uh... Ah! Oh, no! I dropped it on the floor, but five-second roll. I'm going to wash it off. Yeah, it's fine. You kind of want to tuck it. You don't want to roll, you want to tuck. Tuck it so that all the little folds and creases that we want to get rid of to get a nice smooth ball, we're not really getting rid of them, we're just hiding them on the bottom. You see what I'm doing? Yeah, it's the, it's the culinary equivalent of like uh, cleaning up your room by shoving all your stuff in your closet. But uh, you know, hey, if it wakes, it wakes. Because you want this side to have like maybe one or two little nips and tucks there but you want it to be mostly pretty discreet. And then this side, this side is nice and smooth, just a smooth dough ball. And you place that down on your tray. Beautiful. You place it the full, foldy side down. And then you do that eight more times. bagels here, but one must note, these are not true bagels. If I were to bake these, I would not get bagels, I would get rolls. In order to have bagels, we of course must have holes. Holes, very important, both in the terms of holes in bagels and uh, the movie Holes from 2003 starring Shia LaBeouf in regards to our current political situation. 
and to everything really, just to life, you know? Uh oh, shawl's coming off. Sweater's coming off. Getting sweaty up in here. So, the art of making a hole in a bagel has been done by many sharper minds than mine. And uh, there are difficult uh, ways to do it that are technically the more authentic way to do it. But uh, I, I, I like this very easy way of doing it, which is essentially, you're just kind of poking the hole, but you're poking it very slowly. You take it like this, you use your thumbs to just sort of, uh, just sort of ease in there. Just sort of boop-a-doop. Just gently ease with your thumb and keep poking the hole. Keep doing that very gradually. Until eventually you will get, begin to see a dent. And if you want to make a Bialy, you know, a Bialy as in one of those bagels where the hole doesn't go all the way through, if you want to make a Bialy, you can just sort of get it most of the way through and leave it at that. However, we want to make bagels. We want to make true, authentic bagels. So eventually, if you keep doing this, you will get all the way through to the middle. There you are. And just to make sure the hole stays big the whole time, we're gonna do that. There we are. Now, this dough naturally sort of wants to contract, so the hole will get smaller. So, we need to gently ease the hole into opening very wide. Uh, in order, you know, there, there, there's a very obvious anal sex joke that I could make here. I could make that joke, but I won't, because I'm classy. So you, you, you keep doing this, you keep doing this, as all good anal sex havers uh, are familiar with. Make sure the hole is comfortably wide enough to receive, you know, your, uh, your, your fingers here. Okay, I, I'm not gonna talk, that, that's the last anal sex joke I'll make. And then you do this eight more times with all the bagels. And there we are. Nine nice bagels. Now, you might notice, these bagels do not look particularly large. They fit easily in the palm of my hand. Now, that's not a proper-sized bagel, right? Well, th th this is where the sort of time-intensive part comes in. We are going to cover these in plastic wrap and put them in the fridge for 24 hours. And in that time, they're going to expand. And some of the holes are going to contract, but that's okay. We will gently expand them with our fingers again. I'm so sorry. Wonderful. And then you just leave it like that. You just leave it like that overnight. So I will see you later. It's a day later, and we're back. Hello, how are you? I hope you've done well. Of course, for you, it's not a day later. For you, it has been mere moments. But for me, it's, uh, well, not quite 24 hours, but, uh, you know, we're impatient. And in case you're wondering, I did not sleep well. But uh, in good news, I got an apron. Look, look at my apron. It's so nice. I figured in the interim, while I was making bagels for you in my kitchen, which I guess I, I guess this is a cooking show now, I, you know, I might as well look the part and get a nice apron with flowers on it. I love it. So now when I get flour on my, uh, on my hands, I don't have to wipe it on my pants and get my pants all weird and dirty. I can wipe it on my apron. So that's nice. Now, the first thing you want to do is take your bagels out of the fridge and leave them out for 30 to 40 minutes on the counter. I don't always do this, to be frank, but I did it today, because we, we want to do this right. But to be clear, th the bagels turn out fine if you don't do this. And look, they have definitely expanded, and you can see some of the holes have definitely uh, puckered a little bit. So the first thing we are going to do, do 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 is remove the plastic wrap, and we're gonna ease some of these holes back open. But look, oh, they're so big, they have expanded greatly. So we're gonna do this again. Do do do, make sure those holes are nice and wide, and they will contract a little bit again, but that's okay, as long as the holes are still there. 
beautiful. Also, you might have noticed I had to move them to a different tray because that old tray that I put them on belonged to my roommate and my roommate is moving and packing up all her stuff. It's also why I wanted to use the KitchenAid uh, before she took it with her. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna get a big wide pan and fill it with water very carefully and then bring it over to your stove. All right, we are very carefully carrying this pan full of water over to the stove. I find the best way to ensure uh, minimum spillage is to put the glass, uh, put the glass, uh, lid on while you are carrying it. And we are going to set this to a boil, but as soon as we start it up, we gotta add some things. Now, this step is purely optional. You don't have to do this, but I find that this is the best way to get crispy, crunchy crusts on your bagels. And the way to do it is to use barley malt syrup. Now, this is very hard to find. You're probably not gonna get it in a grocery store. However, there is a company that sells it online that will mail it to you. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, and it's really not good for much else. I've been using this jar to make bagels basically uh, since this summer, and it has not run out yet. I'm basically only like a third of the way through. It's a pain in the ass to get, but it will last you a long time. There are like cookie recipes that you can make with barley malt syrup, but they're disgusting. And believe me, I have tried. So you're gonna turn your water on high, and then immediately you're going to fail to open the jar of barley malt syrup. There we are. Aprons, man, useful for everything. And you're going to use approximately one tablespoon uh, of barley malt syrup. And it's very sticky, so it'll be very difficult to, there you go, kind of, sort of. And again, it's very sticky, so it'll take a long time to fully uh, dissolve in the water there. And in fact, before I mix it completely, I'm going to add in the other ingredient. One teaspoon of baking soda. And you're going to mix that in with the barley malt syrup. And you're just gonna mix this continuously until the water is a sort of uniform brown. There we go, get on out of there. So once that looks very nice and uniformly brown, then you just leave that, you cover it until it is boiling. Oh, I'm very hungry. I haven't had breakfast yet, so we're gonna eat these bagels so hard once they're done. Oof. All right, now what you do while you're waiting is you get the drip trays ready, because once these bagels are boiled, they will be very drippy, and you wanna be able to get rid of that excess uh, liquid. Uh, however, the problem is my roommate uh, owned all the drip trays, or well, it's basically the same the same kind of tray as like the one that you like let the cookies cool down on. Uh, and so she owned all those and she took all those uh, and packed them up. So I may have to get creative. I mean, I guess I could just stick them in a colander and drain them. I wouldn't be able to fit that many bagels at once, but I could just put them on the tray after they seem to have dripped down all the liquid. That could work fine, uh, but ideally you want like a cookie tr a cookie cooling tray. Uh, and, and, and another cookie sheet, or another baking sheet, whatever you want to call those flat metal things. I did not Google it in the interim, because I'm not a quitter. But for now, once each bagel is done boiling, I'll just stick it in the colander, let it drip for a little bit, and then put it back on the tray. Improv! That's what we call baking improv. Now, there are some who say that a washed pot never boils, but clearly, those people are quitters and have simply not watched the pot for long enough. So that is what I call a boil. Is it rolling? I would, would I call that a rolling boil? Yeah, it's boiling pretty hard. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take our tray of bagels, we're gonna drop four of these uh, in here. You don't wanna put in too many. You don't want them bumping up against each other too much. Uh, depending on the size of your pan, you might be able to put in more. Once all the men are in, we're gonna set a timer for ah, for two minutes. We're gonna boil them 60 seconds on each side. This sort of long boil here ensures that we get a nice crispy crust with bubbles. The bubble. This is this is where we're adding the bubbles. This is where we're getting bubbles, and bubbles are very important. All right, the one minute mark has passed. Now is the time to flip. Oh, look at those bubbles. I can already 
see the bubbles. Okay, we have hit the zero minute mark, which means that it is time to remove these giggles and put them in our <laughs> colander. And I don't, I don't know if you saw, but those bagels, they did expand. They did expand just a little bit. They're a tiny bit bigger than they were before. And you know what? Uh, I'm gonna be a little reckless and I'm gonna put five in because if I didn't put five in, then I would only have one left after this. And I don't wanna like do a whole third load. So we're just gonna put five of them in there. Flip and flip. All right, and we are removing these to the colander. Oh, look at those bubbles on this bagels. Bubbles on the bagels. That's, no, that's how you know you're having a good time. Wonderful, and then you turn the heat off and let that cool down. Now, while those bagels are draining and the mixture is cooling down here, we're gonna preheat the oven to 465 degrees. Uh, I probably should have preheated it a little earlier, but you know, we're just coping. We're doing the best we can. All right, now we've got these uh, draining for a little bit. We've got these on the tray. Uh, I think I'm gonna add toppings to these bagels, but not these. Here's the thing, is that supermarket bagels are not good without toppings. They are like soft and like just chewy all the way through and they're, they're not fun. So they need like sesame seeds and poppy seeds and everything seasoning in order to be interesting. However, these bagels, I can tell you firsthand, they are very good, just plain with no toppings. But point being, if you wanna to add toppings, now is the time to do it after boiling before baking. I think I'm just gonna do poppy seeds today. Great, I got poppy seeds. Now what I like to do so I don't get poppy seeds all over the tray is I like to pour the poppy seeds into a little bowl and just dip the bagel in the poppy seeds. So now we're gonna pour out some poppy seeds in the bowl and we take the bagel that we want to poppy seed and just sort of smear it around there. Smear it around. I can't put poppy seeds on this one. The bubbles are too beautiful. I'm gonna preserve those bubbles. Keep those bubbles visible. Look at those bubbles. Oh, so good. This is gonna have a great crust. That is four bagels out of the nine that have poppy seeds on them. I think that's a good ratio. You can also use whatever toppings you want. You can use sesame seeds, you can use garlic chunks. You can, of course, use this everything but the bagel uh, seasoning blend from, from Trader Joe's that has, you know, all the everything bagel toppings in there. But uh, honestly, I don't like an everything bagel. I don't want everything on my bagel. It's just overwhelming, you know? It's so many flavors all happening at once, and I'm a simple man, you know? In good news, though, we did use most of the poppy seeds, so the rest of these, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking snack on them. They're not that good by themselves. Poppy seeds are not that good by themselves. You know, stuck in your, in your mouth there. The oven takes a while to preheat, okay? I gotta keep myself entertained. I really hope I don't have to take a drug test sometime soon. Okay, the oven is preheated. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tray of bagels. You are going to put it in the oven for six minutes. Take it out, flip the bagels over, put it in for another six minutes. Pretty simple. There we are. Wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. All right, time is up. We are gonna take this out of the oven! Alright, oh that smells wonderful! We're going to flip every single bagel and then we plop them in for another six minutes. Wonderful, fantastic! Ah, oh, look at those bagels! They're nice and brown on the bottom. They smell so good. Ooh, there's a little bit of brown on the top there. Wonderful. Look at that. Well, I'm gonna let these cool down for a little bit, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get my toppings ready. Now, of course, you can put whatever toppings you want on your bagel, but I am a traditionalist. I love a lox and a little bit of cream cheese, although in my case, it is uh, tofu cream cheese. Oh, with garlic and herb. I got the kind with garlic and herb. 
That's fine, I don't mind. And a slice of tomato and a little bit of lettuce. And I usually also like a little bit of red onion, but I don't have any red onion, cause I forgot. But look at that, look at the steam coming off it. Look at the soft insides and look at that crust. Look at that bubbly, crunchy crust. Oh, beautiful. Look, hang on, listen. Oh, you can, you can hear the crunch and you can see the nice gooey chewy insides. Oh, beautiful. Now of all the bagels in the world, uh, this is probably the best bagel in the world to just eat, just like completely without any other topping, without any flavoring. It has so much flavor by itself, but you know, we wanna be all fancy. So we're gonna get our better than cream cheese with garlic and oib. Garlic and oib, that's what we call it. Gonna get a little bit of that. Get a slice of tomato, put that on there. Oh. Oh, we love a good lox. There we go, we'll put two slices on there. And then just a little bit of lettuce. And look at that, look at that beautiful lox bagel sandwich there. Amazing, oh, it looks so nice. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Pure Nirvana. Hang on, got cream cheese on my chin. There you go. Just no feeling in the world like it. The bread itself is flavorful and warm and has a little bit of umami flavor in there. But then the lox and the tomato and the lettuce give it all and it ties it all together. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. And you know what I like to do? See how this little bit of cream cheese is coming off the top? Mmm, beautiful. Coming off the bottom too. There we go. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. It is very good. I am like overselling it a little bit for the camera for the sake of effect, I'll be frank, but it is very good. It makes me endlessly happy. And we all need a little bit of happiness right now. There you go, that's my bagel recipe. It is a little worky. Well, it's a lot worky. <laughs> Take some time and some effort. Give it a try. It's beautiful, it's fun, it's nice. And uh, yeah, I don't have any particular conclusion, any philosophical witty thing to say to wrap it up, but uh, yeah, you know, be well, make bagels, have a good time, and I will see you later.